Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the topic Listen Principles of a Software Radio in the first unit of the course Software Defined Radio. So this covers subjective wherein we will be able to understand the evolved paradigm of Software Defined Radio and the technologies for its implementation. So the design principles of a software radio, it requires a broad set of design skills. It is not uh, occurring a single skill so that we will be able to do the radio design. The software radio's design requires a higher skill level than just digital signal processing programming skill. So it's not that you know only the digital signal processing programming and you will be able to do the radio design because it is dependent on a lot of uh, other things for the radio subsystems. So generally the software radios derive its benefits because of the flexibility, complete and easy reconfigurability and scalability. So these things, all these three things should be present in the final product as well when we design a software radio. Next we will see the steps involved for the designing a software radio. The first step would be systems engineering. The next step is RF chain planning. The third step would be analog to digital conversion and digital to analog conversion selection. The next step would be software architecture design. The fifth step is digital signal processing hardware architecture selection and the last final step would be radio validation. So we will see the steps one by one. The first step would be systems engineering. So in this step we would be understanding the constraints and requirements of the communication link and the network protocol. So only if we understand the constraints, so what are the limitations and what are the requirements that are to be implemented, we will be able to allocate the sufficient resources. So the resources allocation is determined by the constraints and also the requirements. So for example, the range and transmission power constraints. So when we say range, the distance to which it is to be communicated. So on the transmission power constraints, so it determine so if we have uh, this is the power that I could transmit. So these two would be determining the moderation types and the data rate to be used in the radio design. The additional flexibility uh, in the radio software radio makes the systems engineering uh, and the optimization uh, even more difficult task. So it makes it more complex and also the optimizing the Optim active communication is a bigger task to be completed in the systems engineering. The next step is RF chain planning, so radio frequency chain planning. So the ideal uh, radio frequency chain for a software radio should support simultaneous selection of power gain, bandwidth, center frequency, sensitivity and dynamic range. So all these things should be able to be uh, selected simultaneously. If we take the case of a commercial or military band software radio, so it will have constraints. In the case of a commercial or uh, military bands, so we will have the uh, limitations. So, uh, which makes optimization problem simplified than that of a ideal a software radio. So, in the case of software radio design, some inadequacies of the RF components can be compensated in the digital domain. So, whatever we are not able to do in the case of hardware, we will be able to do that in the software. Say, for example, compensation for power amplifier distortion and the power management of the uh, radio frequency circuitry, RF circuitry. So all these things can be 
compensated in the uh, digital domain. The third step is analog to digital conversion and digital to analog conversion selection. So it is uh, very much difficult to achieve for ideal software radio. Uh, while in practice, uh, the selection requires trading power consumption, dynamic range, and the bandwidth. So the analog to digital conversion and digital to analog conversion selection is closely tied to the RF requirements uh, for the dynamic range and the frequency translation. So for the selection, channelization requirements also uh, has its impact. If we take the currently, in the current scenario, uh, the conversion technology is limited. So, the ADC and DAC, the conversion technology is limited. So, we will be able to do post digitization techniques. So, after the conversion uh, to digital domain, uh, based on uh, multi-rate digital signal processing, uh, that helps to improve the flexibility of the digitization stage. Post digitization techniques helps to improve the flexibility. So, the limitations of the ADC and DAC will be able to give more flexibility through the post digitization techniques. The next step would is the software architecture selection. The software architecture is important for uh, maintainability, expandability compatibility, scalability for the software radio. The software has to be aware of the capabilities of the hardware. So, what is the digital signal processing that we are going to do? The uh, processes and the RF hardware. So, based on the hardware uh, that is uh, used, the software architecture is to be uh, used based on the capabilities. The software radio needs to control issues like attribute naming, error management and addressing. So, regardless of the protocol that is being used. Uh, in the case of software, the partitioning uh, radio functions into objects. So, that helps in the portability and maintenance of the uh, software. One more thing which is uh, very important is the security. The important issue is to ensure software downloads are legitimate and also the latency and timing for the whole protocol stack should also be considered. The first step is the digital signal processing hardware architecture selection. So, in this hardware architecture selection, uh, the core uh, digital signal processing hardware would be that of microprocessor, uh, field programmable gate arrays, application specific integrated circuits. If we take the case of a microprocessor, uh, they give maximum flexibility, uh, but consume highest power and the computational rate is also the lowest. If we take the case of application specific integrated circuits, uh, they provide a minimal flexibility, but on the high side, they have the lowest power consumption and also the highest computational rate. If we take the case of field programmable gate arrays, so they stand between the uh, ASIC and the DSP. So, they give uh, medium flexibility with uh, mid level power consumption and uh, mid level computational rate. So, the selecting the digital signal processing hardware, selecting the hardware, it depends on the hardware, sorry, uh, algorithm. So, whether we need to go in for FPGA or ASIC or microprocessor depends upon the algorithm to be implemented. It is uh, the uh, algorithm's computational complexity and also the throughput requirements. So, in practice, all the three core computing elements will be used. Next step is radio validation. So, it is a most difficult step in the case of a design of a software radio. So, what are you designed whether it is working properly? So, generally validation, uh, you are uh, ensuring that the system is operating to the requirements. But in addition to ensuring the communicating units operate correctly, so whether they are communicating properly 
apart from that we are also in a position to ensure that a glitch does not cause system level failures so this is a additional thing that needs to be uh, taken care in the case of software radio so say for example if we have uh, interference caused by safety radio software radio into the adjacent bands this might cause system level failure uh, this is a very great concern to government regulators so the regulators uh, have to ensure that the software radios do not uh, provide interference in their adjacent bands it is very very difficult to ensure a fail proof system so the difficulty is uh, due to the presence of many variable parameters and also the desire for open and varied source of software modules so we are since we are going to use very different uh, source of software modules and uh, they are open and there are very many parameters that are variable uh, it is very difficult to ensure that the system operates fail proof and the testing and validation steps to minimize risk so we have to ensure testing and validation then are done uh, properly to minimize the risk the structuring the software to link various modules with their limitations and deficiencies so if we have this software structured so that it is able to address the limitation and deficiencies so those help in the testing the compatibility of the software modules so in general uh, for designing a software radio the software radios are designing require a much higher level of system level uh, engineering and cooperative interdisciplinary design is required for a software radios so the subsystem should control and be controlled by other systems so when we have this kind of system where the subsystems they are able to control the other subsystems and they can be controlled by the other subsystems so this need to be ensured in a software radio so the designers the software radio designers should be must be knowledgeable in a variety of technical disciplines to ensure that it is uh, working properly so in this video we have seen the different steps for designing a software radio thank you